Hi, I'm Matt. This video will show you how to submit an SPFIB or specific pre-flight information bulletin using the NAPES internet service, otherwise known as NIS. The purpose of the SPFIB is to retrieve specific MET and NOTAM information relevant to the departure, destination and en route locations using either a briefing list attached to a stored route or through an ad hoc route. Once logged in, select SPFIB from the side menu and to create a new bulletin, click SPFIB. This will now display the blank new SPFIB form. All fields that display a red asterisk are compulsory. The remainder are optional. First, select a time validity. An SPFIB is valid from the time that the briefing is requested until the end of the validity period specified in the request. You may set validity period anywhere from 1 to 240 hours. If no time is entered, it defaults to 24 hours as seen here. Keep in mind, when briefing too far in advance, you will be required in accordance with AIP en route 1.10 flight plan preparation to obtain an update within one hour of departure to ensure that the latest information available can be used for the flight. At any time, if you are unsure of what a field means, you can hover the cursor over the field. An explanation will be presented if available. Moving on to true airspeed. Enter true airspeed as either knots or Mach number. Speed in knots is formatted as the first letter N for November, then the four digits for speed. Where if the speed is below 1000 knots, we use zeros as fillers at the beginning. For example, 200 knots would be November 0200, or 90 knots would be November 0090. Same applies for the Mach number, but there are only three digits for speed. Our speed for this SPFIB will be 350 knots, or November 0350. Now we select the weight category from the drop down menu before moving on to the filter checkboxes. Let me describe the optional filters to you now. Domestic. This is the default selection. You would only deselect if your SPFIB is to an international location. Expanded wind profile. Select this if a grid wind profile for each segment is required. If left unchecked, you'll be given the average winds between departure and destination. Australian International Series NOTAM. If you select this, you'll be provided with the international versions of Australian domestic NOTAM. Because not all locations are sent internationally, we do not recommend selecting this option, as you risk missing out on relevant NOTAM. It is only advised for international flights. Full text NOTAM. Select if full text of all NOTAM is required. If unselected, you will receive a one-line summary for any NOTAM older than seven days. Departure Aerodrome. The departure aerodrome for this example will be Brisbane. If you're unsure of the correct code, click the magnifying glass icon next to the field to be presented with the location directory. Type the name of the location and all relevant location codes will be displayed. ETD date can be selected using the calendar, but make sure to select the correct UTC date. As with many morning flights, the UTC date will actually be the date before the current local date. ETD time is nominated again in UTC 0300. The flight level field can be entered as a flight level or an altitude. Altitudes are entered with an A followed by three numbers in 100 foot increments. For example, 1500 feet would be alpha 015. 500 feet would be alpha 005. Flight levels are entered with an F, followed by three numbers in 500 foot increments. The level for this SPFIB will be 21,000 feet, entered as Foxtrot 210. Destination is Sydney. Route code. If you are tracking via a stored route, select the magnifying glass and choose from the available options. If your track is not presented to you at this point, simply enter direct in the route code field, or you can enter your tracking details in the turning points text area. For this example, our aircraft will be tracking by stored route Hotel 2. An alternate aerodrome and route can be entered next if required. 
Next, we'll move to the Additional Locations field and enter any additional locations we may require. As we have used the stored route for this flight, there is little we need to add, but if we are doing an ad hoc SPFIB, which means manually entering the turning points or tracking direct, we would need to include additional information, such as FIR no temp, en route PRD no temp, R4 areas for low and medium height bands, and any other locations we'd like. This is now a complete single stage SPFIB. To enter more stages, up to a maximum of 10, simply click Add Stage at the top. Once you are happy with the details, select Get Briefing. You are now presented with your bulletin and have the option to print it or select back to be returned to the original screen. Take note that each SPFIB is assigned a unique number. This will allow you to update your briefing as your flight progresses. SBFIB are available to be updated at any point within the assigned validity period. SBFIBs can be updated through the active menu option in the SBFIB section of NIS or by contacting the briefing office. We hope you found today's video helpful. Further information can be obtained from the NAPES Instant Service User Manual, which is located in the Documents and Downloads section. If you have any questions, please call the briefing office on 1800 805 150. If you have any feedback or would like to see an educational package on a certain topic, please fill out the Contact Us form which is located on the Air Services website under Contact Us.